All right, here's the deal. I've been challenged by two other Swedish YouTubers, Rickard and Kasten, to build a boat. We're gonna make one each and race. The fastest one wins, but you can also win by the most awesome one, the most special one. There are different routes you can win in multiple categories. We are also allowed to sabotage for one another. We can't make contact with each other's boats, but we are allowed to fire things to distract one another. My plan is to build a hydroplaning boat. I've 3D printed the parts and I've used spray spackle and spray paint to make them waterproof. There will be two pontoons onto the side and we'll connect them through the main hull with carbon tubes. We also have the motor mount and we'll have a three motor setup. So the idea here is that the middle motor will be responsible for most of the thrust forward and the side motors will be used for steering but also help push the boat forward. So it's basically gonna be a hydroplaning airboat. That's the idea, so let's begin with the build. Okay, I finished the build, it looks freaking awesome by the way. So now let's go through the electronics real quick. The three motor setup has a individual speed controller. This is the big one for the middle motor. And then I have two smaller speed controllers for the side motors, all rated for six cell batteries, which we're going to use. If I push this to the left, this one spins up and this one slows down. And if this spins up, it will turn to the left. And that's why I pushed this to the left. So full throttle forward would be this up and this up. It's been raining the past few hours, so uh, let's go out on the grass and test it. It freaking works. Yes, this was the solution at hand. It's not CDC approved. We're gonna have to make some proper covers. I would give it a 80% chance of success, 10% chance of the steering being all messed up and I'll leave the last 10% to sinking. Stop, stop, stop. Thanks. The water splashing up from the carbon fiber tubes was enough to undo the nut holding the propeller in place. Um, I'm about to attempt something potentially very stupid. I've added two brackets to create two compartments within the main hole and I'm going to fill them up with expanding foam. I'm going to do the same thing on the pontoons by drilling a few holes and the reason for this is to minimize the leakage but also add some structure so that it could handle a head-on collision a little better. This could definitely end with the plastic breaking, so maybe I shouldn't do it. Was that a success? I don't think... So I went out on the raft to test it and dropped it in the water. I drove off but noticed that the 360 camera was way too heavy for it. I later removed it and put a GoPro closer to the center of gravity, but now it was digging too deep into the water. After removing it though, it was able to hydroplane and the speed was pretty insane. It's just like when skipping a rock on the surface of the water, it's almost as if it's half the time in the water and half the time it's flying. Okay, here are some big changes coming up. The main reason for this is that the steering is non-existent. So what I'm gonna do to battle this is shopping off the two side motors. They were off most of the time anyway, and at the high speed, they did absolutely nothing to make the boat go left or right. So what I'm gonna try instead is this 3D printed rudder, and I'm gonna attach it to a servo which means we can use a battery half the size, half the weight, no problem.
At this point the steering was a lot better, but now it wouldn't hydroplane. Thinking it was lack of power with just one motor, I decided to put back the two side motors. So I'll let this surface dry and then push this down to make a good seal. Still, it didn't feel like before and now it just had to be the rudder as that was the only thing I changed. I'm not sure if I got this on video, but I just trimmed the rudder, I cut off an inch and that solved all my problems. PCBWay offers the best custom PCB prototyping services, but did you also know that they do injection molding, 3D printing, laser and CNC cutting? With their instant quote feature, you can simply upload your model, in this case a 54mm impeller for my electric surfboard. You can choose from SLA, FDM and SLM, which is a laser melting a metal powder to make metal parts. They also have an instant quote feature for their custom PCB, so go ahead and try it right now at PCBWay.com. Ja, men jag fick en liten idé. Vad tror du om att du kör den här och så tar jag surfbrädan och så rejsar vi? Du kommer inte ha chans. <laughs> ja, men det, det fattar du själv. Du såg ju vart den går. Men jag tror det häftiga där är att jag kan ha en kamera på mig och filma när den åker förbi mig. Förstår du vad jag menar? Ja. I know the surfboard is doing 45 km an hour based on previous calculations and there is no way I could catch up to it. Whoa. And at this point the boat crashed and flipped and I was completely oblivious. The electric speed controller for this motor got water damaged, so I had to cut them both off. We tried with just a middle motor and it was still insanely fast, so I managed to capture this. And now it was time for the competition with these two and uh, here's how that day went. It's 6.45 and we have a four hour drive to our destination. Going to the most Swedish place I've ever heard. But it's gonna be great. What the? My understanding is that we have built vastly different boats. These two guys come from the non-electric era if that makes sense. I know one of them is definitely not going electric, so it's going to be really interesting to see what, what we have all produced. Three hours and 58 minutes left. See you in about four hours. Whew. So this is Rickard and this is Kasten. <laughs> and here's how the race went. Okay, so here's what happened that day. Rickard actually had two boats with him, one of which had two EDF fans pivoting on two servos. Beautiful boat, looked awesome. Now, he tested another one first with little success, so he switched back to the EDF version, and Kasten had a tank of a boat. You had to be two people carrying it with a combustion engine, PVC piping, it was madness. So we lined up all three boats, right, and we were supposed to do four lapses. I assumed three lapses and Rickard unfortunately didn't get his boat to work correctly so he managed to do maybe half a lap before his boat just completely stopped. Kasten on the other hand actually did work pretty well it was just painfully slow so he managed to do maybe one lap in the time it took me to do three. Now I managed to do three and a half laps before I crashed into Rickard's boat. It caused my battery to disconnect itself on impact and so with no control Kasten managed to finish completely all four lapses and won fair and square. So congrats to Kasten for winning this race. After some modifications I came up with a combination of steering that worked pretty well and that's a air rudder and a boat 
water rudder combined. Even at high speeds it turns okay, it could definitely be better, but for a hydroplaning boat I think it's pretty decent. You're not gonna believe this, but in that crash none of the plastic parts broke, but the shaft on the motor sheared off. I've never seen that before, that's insane. And I still want to get some full speed passes on video, I don't think I've done a good job on that, so I printed a new mount and I'm gonna replace the motor and go again. Alright, the motor mount is ready, we also had water on one of the speed controllers, so I swapped it out, reprogrammed the new one. Now here are clips of the boat going full speed. Hey, thanks for watching, I appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, it just makes my day. And don't forget to check out Rickouch and Kushten's channels, link in the description below. And uh, let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. See you again soon, bye.